ஹலோ வெல்கம் டு லா எக்ஸலன்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு த எக்ஸ்பிளேஷன் வீடியோ ஃபார் டெஸ்ட் ஒன் தட் இஸ் கண்டக்டட் டுடே ஆன் டுவெண்ட்டி செவன்த் ஆஃப் ஜான்வரி இன் தி பார்ட் ஒன் ஆஃப் திஸ் எக்ஸ்பிளேஷன் செஷன் லெட் அஸ் சி தி அனாலிசிஸ் ஆஃப் தி கொஷன்ஸ் கிவன் அண்டர் கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸ் ஹியர் தேர் ஆர் ஃபியூ ஆப்ஜெக்டிவ்ஸ் ஃபார் திஸ் பர்டிகுலர் வீடியோ ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஒன் ஈஸ் டு கிவ் யூ தி ஆன்சர் we will say which option is correct a b c d which one is correct we will see that and we will explain you using different dimensions this explanation is based on why a particular answer is correct if we are saying a is correct why is this correct so we will be discussing the logic behind that particular question in the explanation we will ensure that you learn this particular technique of elimination elimination technique is very important and in the same explanation we are going to ensure and we are going to tell you about how to identify certain terms which will confuse us in writing the questions for example there are certain terms known as only not shall these are terms in general where we get confused so we will be identifying such terms in each question we will be explaining you how to be careful while answering such questions this is our broader objective behind this particular video first current affairs question in today's test is the 11th question that deals with national registry of citizens nrc here if you see the options in three options a b c one is there so if we can eliminate one we will be left with only c so let us see whether one is correct or not if we can eliminate at it at the first instance we will get c as the answer let us see what is first option first point it is the list of all bona fide citizens of assam nrc is the list of all bona fide citizens and by preliminary reading of our newspapers we will get to know assam state has nrc under assam accord so option 1 or this point 1 is correct so we can't eliminate this but we can eliminate this because there is no one given over here so 1 2 1 3 1 2 3 we are left with these things and now if we can eliminate either 2 or 3 any one we can get the answer let's say if we can eliminate 2 we can eliminate this option this option so answer will be b or if we can eliminate 3 we can eliminate b and d so a becomes the answer so let us go through second statement and third statement assam is not the only state with such documents in northeastern states the meaning of it is that other states at least one state has this nrc provision so in newspapers if you read tripura is asking for nrc but we don't know let's assume we don't know whether nrc is being extended to tripura or not so let's keep that aside now option 3 says nrc is updated as per the provisions of citizenship act and citizenship rules of 2003 so this is a factual point citizenship amendment act and citizenship rules 2003 so if we don't know this fact we can't attempt this question because we are not sure of two we don't know this factual information so we should what we should do we should leave it otherwise let's say we know this factual information this is correct information nrc is updated as per the provisions of citizenship act and rules only so this is correct so we know 1 and 3 are correct but here 1 and 3 are correct means this option we can eliminate we have 1 3 and 1 2 3 so again now the tie has come over here we should know to otherwise we can't answer this for sure because 50 50 chances are there for the options b and d so there is no other option except knowing this point 2 and here we can say that 
Tripura was asking for NRC but not it implemented and at present Assam is the only state with such documentation of NRC. So here not is the word because of which this statement has become incorrect. So 2 is incorrect. Answer is B 1 and 3 only. So the explanation is also given over here. It's only in the state of Tripura provisions of citizenship act and one value addition over here is generally citizenship is applied in India by birth. In articles 5 to 11 of our Indian constitution if we go through citizenship can be acquired by birth but for those of illegal migrants and their children grandchildren citizenship is not not accorded not is important not accorded by birth if they are accorded by birth all other people who are born for these illegal immigrants will become citizens of india as of now under nrc this rule is not being recognized it means all illegal migrants Yes, their names won't be there in NRC. Even their children and grandchildren names won't be there, won't be there in NRC. That is one value addition over here. Next question is given under question number 12. This question is related to Fugitive Economic Offenders Act. Whenever there are important acts, their provisions are being asked as a question in our prelims. So, we should know the important provisions of such acts. Here the question is, who is declared as fugitive economic offender? It means, to declare a particular person as fugitive economic offender, there is a certain criteria mentioned under Fugitive Economic Offenders Act. What is it? That is the question. So, if we go through the options, first option A says, one upon which arrest warrant has been issued for specified issues where the value involved is 1000 crores. In general, whenever there are certain amounts involved, UPSC try to test us by changing the numbers. So, we should be careful while reading such options. So, we should, be, we should see whether it is 1000 crore, 10 crore or 100 crore. So, this is a factual data. We should be 100% sure while going for this particular option. Okay, let's read other options also. Let's assume we don't know this for time being. B. One who, who has left the country and refuses to return to face prosecution. This we can mark it as correct because by reading our newspapers, we can understand certain cases like Vijay Malya. He has left the country and refusing to return for the prosecution. So, he is the first person who is declared as fugitive economic offender. So, we know B is correct. It means D is removed. B is correct. But we can't keep B as answer because option C says both A and B. Unless we eliminate A, we can't keep B as the answer. So, we should go to this particular point again and see whether this is 1000 crore or 100 crores. In this particular act, 100 crores is the amount mentioned, not 1000 crores. Such kind of factual confusions we may get in the exam. So, we should be sure of these factual data. So, it is 100 crores, not 1000 crores. So, A is eliminated means C also eliminated answer is B. So, for the 12th question, answer is B. Here is the explanation for this particular question. It is 100 crores and has left the country, refusing to return to the prosecution. So, let's say if the option is the person who has left the country and is willing to return to the prosecution, can we declare that person as fugitive economic offender? No. Willing to return to the prosecution. In that case, we can't declare that person as fugitive economic offender. And one value addition over here is that it extends not only to loan defaulters and fraudsters, but also to individuals who violate laws, who violate, this is important, who violate laws governing taxes, black money, Binami properties and financial corruption. This is one value addition. So, what we should do? 
here our explanation session and our explanation sheet is not just giving you why such option is correct why other options are incorrect but it is also giving us value addition so we should learn some information from the explanation given over here next current affairs question is 13th question that is related to one index known as corruption perception index in the recent years upsc is asking at least one or two questions related to indices reports and organizations that are releasing these indices and reports here in this particular question the question is asking us who gives or which of the organization gives corruption perception index so we should see whether it is world bank united nations convention against corruption transparency international international monetary fund here by reading this particular name what we can observe Cor corruption perception index so we can think this can be released either by this united nations convention against corruption because the word mentioned over here or transparency international because in our governance we must have read about corruption and related issues in accountability and transparency chapter so we can think of b and c as most probable but these questions are factual questions so we should be able to identify them properly otherwise see here we have 50 50 percent chances and sometimes world bank also gives some indices related to governance so we can't see we can't say this is the exact answer if we don't know the fact so corruption perception index what we should do we should write all the important indices of the last 7 to 8 months at one place and write indices given by whom and what is the criteria of this particular index what is the major objective of this particular index if we can make certain tables we can revise them easily before the exam and we can attempt it correct so here corruption perception index is released by transparency international which is a civil society organization so for the 13th question answer is c corruption perception index is released by transparency international and questions can be asked in reverse also transparency international releases which index that can be the question we can interchange a question to that also transparency international releases which index then we should identify that corruption perception index the next current affairs question is given under question number 14 This question is asking which of the following pairs is incorrectly matched so underline it or circle this particular word incorrectly otherwise we might get confused and we might read this as correctly and keep wrong option so now we have underlined incorrectly first point says anti dumping duty this question is asked because in this test we are giving june and july months of 2018's current affairs so during that period anti dumping duty was in news so to know the clarity between different types of tariffs at the import and export level especially at the external sector we have given you this particular question first option says anti dumping duty let's read what is given over here additional import duty imposed to neutralize the negative effects of subsidies so neutralize the negative effect it means countering something so by reading this we can say this is not dumping but this is something else okay let's read second point also countervailing duty it says protectionist tariff imposed by domestic government on foreign imports priced lower than their value in their home market if someone is sending us the goods that is lower than their own market we say that as dumping so this is dumping by just reading the english words we can say that this is dumping so this duty would be anti dumping duty not countervailing duty here if you read the statement additional import duty imposed to neutralized it means to counter something so this is 
countervailing duty. So here we have interchanged these two statements. In UPSC, most of the times, especially when there are interrelated concepts, they just interchange. Interchange and give the statements to confuse us. Here, anti-dumping duty is this, countervailing duty is this. Let's read the third option. Safeguard duty means protection duty. Tariffs imposed to restrict imports temporarily to protect domestic industries. Under WTO World Trade Organization, we have all these duties recognized. Safeguard duty is imposed to protect or to safeguard our domestic industries. By understanding the terms, these terms, we can answer this question easily. So, 2 and 1 are incorrect. 3 is correct. So, which one is the answer? B is the answer. But let's say we have not read this particular word carefully. Which one will we choose? 3 as the answer. That's why we should be careful. Here, incorrect. That means answer is B, not C. Here under explanation, each word is mentioned and described. Countervailing duty, safeguard duty, anti-dumping duty and as a value addition we have given inverted duty structure. So, once carefully read the explanation sheet given to you. Next current affairs question is given under question number 16. This is a factual question which is asking us Vikramasila Gangetic Dolphin Sanctuary is located in which state? Such questions are common in our environment and in our geography. In our environment and geography, direct ABCD points are asked by testing the factual information. Here, by observing this name Vikramasila, you might have read this in our history, Vikramasila University. Now also we have this name, Vikramasila University in Bihar. At least by that we can guess that is in Bihar. So, this particular Vikramasila Gangetic Dolphin Sanctuary is in the state of Bihar. So, answer is C. Here in the explanation, we have given the value addition. What is this Ganges Dolphin? Where is it find? It is found in Ganges, Brahmaputra, Meghana and Karanfuli Sangu River systems of Nepal, India and Bangladesh. So, this can be a question again. Gangetic Dolphin inha inhabits which, which river systems or which states or which countries. So, by reading this particular explanation, you can answer similar types of questions, at least two to three questions on the same topic. That is the importance of explanation sheet. Next current affairs question is given under question number 27. This question says, with regard to bad bank, sometimes discussed in the news, which of the following is not correct? So, underline not. Let's read each option individually. First one, Economic Survey 2016 and 17 advocated a centralized public sector asset rehabilitation agency to be established to deal with bad loans. This is a factual question so we should be knowing this whether this survey mentioned it or not so let's leave it aside uh, read the second option b it is a non-government private limited company that will take over the largest and most difficult stressed loans from public sector banks in order to help clean their balance sheets so let's say bad bank so no mention of word public so, we don't know whether it is public or private. So, let's leave this option also for some time. Read this option C. It is a bank set up to buy the bad loans of a bank with significant non-performing assets at market place. So, we know that bad bank buys the loans, bad loans of other banks. So, here this is correct. Let's read D. Why are we reading D when C is correct? It is asking not correct statement. So, we should identify the incorrect statement. Let's read D. It buys bad loans from commercial banks at a discount rate and recovers money 
from defaulters by providing a systematic solution so if you observe the logic logic given under these three we can say c and d are interlinked a bank that buys bad loans from different banks and provide a solution get the money so they'll operate like that so now the tie is between a and b whether a is correct or b is correct if you see bad bank as seen here we have seen commercial banks large banking system so here private limited company getting these bad loans or bad assets from public sector banks so is this logic correct so in most of the cases if huge public sector banks are involved then it will be most probably in the public sector not private limited company or non government company so we can say logically this is incorrect so a must be correct we should identify only one statement that is incorrect that is b b is the answer bad bank is the concept that is constantly there in the news so we should read about it thoroughly this is one of the probable questions in prelims here in the explanation it is mentioned that government institution is proposed not the private institution in this economic survey of 2016 and 17 to solve the twin balance sheet problem this can itself be a question what is twin balance sheet problem twin balance sheet means balance sheet of banks balance sheets of corporates both are under problem so to solve this government has proposed or this particular economic survey has proposed this public sector asset rehabilitation agency known as PARA Next current affairs question is given under question number 28 here the question is regarding rice fortification here there is no negative term so we need to identify the correct one what is the meaning of rice fortification let's read the options it is the practice of increasing the content of essential micronutrients essential micronutrients in rice to improve its nutritional quality so it looks good so rice fortification means it can be probable answer okay let's keep it aside so even if you know a is the correct answer or even if you think a is the perfect answer you should read other options sometimes the options given might be confusing so we should read all the options thoroughly before keeping answer b it is a practice part of organic farming to produce rice without use without use of fertilizers and pesticides what is this called as organic farming and in organic farming sustainable agriculture this is known as sustainable agricultural practice so this also looks good but here it is not specifically regarding rice fortification or rice so this is in doubt let's keep that aside c it is a process of increasing the content of carbohydrates carbohydrates in regularly milled rice already rice has a high content of carbohydrates so if we are saying rice fortification why will we say about carbohydrates so this looks less probable answer so let's leave this option d it is a process of adding nutrients that were lost during the processing of food what is this called this is called food enrichment enrichment means already some some elements are there so they were lost during the processing so we are adding them again so this is known as food enrichment not food fortification option a says we are adding them some things that are not there already in the food or that are not there already in the rice that's why this is called fortification and rice fortification so option a and d these two are more probable but correct answer is option a that is called rice fortification option d is called as rice enrichment or food enrichment 
Here in the explanation, answer is given A and we have explained already what is food fortification, what is food enrichment. So the differences between the two is very important that can be tested in different ways in the examination. Food fortification, food enrichment. We should know the differences. Enrich, enrich means something's lost and we are adding them again. Fortif fortification, not there, adding them. Next current affairs question is given under question number 29 that says recently this ministry has health and family welfare has banned manufacture of oxytocin and imposed ban on the import also. So what are the statements that are correct with regard to oxytocin? This is the question. So let's read the options. It is a hormone secreted by the pituitary gla gland. If we know first option is correct, we can eliminate option B and C. Here if you see, oxytocin is released by this particular gland known as pituitary gland. So that is correct. So let us eliminate option 2 and option, option B and option C because 1 is not there. Now 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. It means 3 is correct. We need to see whether 2 is correct or not. That is the only thing. Its injection can increase the size of pumpkins, watermelons and cucumbers. Third says it stimulates mam mammary gland and induces milk production in farm animals. This is correct because let's say even if we don't know whether this is correct or not. As we have eliminated B and C in A and D 3 is there. So this should be correct. And the second one, its injection can increase the size of pumpkins, watermelons and cucumbers. How should we know such factual points? To know that, when we read current affairs, you might have read the reasons for banning oxytocin. Why oxytocin was banned? Indiscriminatory use of this hormone led to many negative effects. Why this was used to increase the size of these vegetables and to produce more milk from anim in the form animals etc so for these two reasons only it was banned so by reading the reasons in the newspaper we can identify two is correct so answer is d one two three here in the explanation it is mentioned about oxytocin how it releases etc and why it is banned. If we know this particular part, we can answer this particular question. The next current affairs question is given under question number 30. And this question is also a factual question related to index. We said at least one or two questions based on indices and reports will be asked in the final UPSC exam. So here composite water management index. This index is given by whom? That is the question. Central Water Commission, yes, probable. Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, maybe probable. Niti Aayog, maybe. Union Ministry of Water Resources, four are very much close. For example, here World Bank, some IMF. If these are the options, we can eliminate them. But here, Central Water Commission, Water Management Index. So, we can't eliminate this. Ministry of Water Resources, Water Management Index. We can't eliminate this also. So for such questions, we should know the answer pakka. Otherwise, we should not attempt them. Here, the answer is Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog has released Composite Water Management Index. Here in the explanation, it is mentioned that Niti Aayog has released it to what? To assess and improve the performance in efficient management of water resources among states. So, this index, Composite Water Management Index, is seen as promoter of competitive federalism. It promotes competition between the states, saying who is performing well, who is not performing well. So, for, it is one of the examples for competitive federalism. Next current affairs question is given under question number 31. It says, which among the following benefits can be provided by setting up single point and real time source for financial liabilities 
of a person or entity. By reading this particular statement, we can say that one credit registry should be there that will have all the real-time information. So, in news, we have this term known as public credit registry. Based on this news article, we have given this question. So, this question is based on the advantages or need for the PCR. Here, what are the advantages of PCR? You can directly or simplify this question as what are the advantages or applications of PCR, public credit registry. Let's read the first one. Removes information asymmetry. Yes or no? PCR is taken that this person, this bank, everyone gets the same information. Means information asymmetry is removed. So this is correct. Improves access to credit. So let's say this person has taken loan from this bank and is paying regularly the installments. This, this bank will check this particular information and can give the credit to him or that particular entity. So, this improves the access to credit. That is also correct. And reduces the problem of non-performing assets. One of the important objectives of PCR itself is to reduce the NPAs. How? See, for example, this person has taken loan from this person and wants to take loan from this this bank etc so if these two know that this person or this company is not performing well they will not extend the loan again that will reduce the npas so this is also correct fourth one it improves india's ranking in world banks ease of doing business let's say we don't know this option but we know what is ease of doing business it is based on 10 parameters among the 10 parameters, one is easy availability of credit. So, this is related to this one, second point. So, if second one is correct, fourth one also would be correct. That's how we can say this is correct. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 are correct. Answer is D. 1, 2, 3, 4. The explanation is given over here. Here additional points are mentioned. Vayam Diyosthali committee has recommended this. So read this once and gain the value addition. The next current affairs question is given under question number 52. This question says global environmental facility and identify the correct statement. So correct we need to underline global environmental facility that we need to underline. Let's read the options. First option says, it serves as a financial mechanism. Financial mechanism for conventions on biological diversity, UNFCC. This is the first statement. So, most probably global environmental facility. These two are related to environment. So, let's say this is correct. Let's assume this is correct. Second one. It undertakes scientific research on environmental issues at the global level. So, research. So, is it a research institute or anything else? That we should know to answer this. Third point. It is an agency under OECD. OECD is developed countries group. So, is it correct or not? that we should think about it. It is an agency under OECD to facilitate the transfer of technology and funds to underdeveloped countries with specific aim to protect their environment. This also looks good. This also looks probable. So, here elimination technique will not work unless we know properly what is global environmental facility. This is a fund. Global environmental facility is a fund under different conventions that includes biological diversity convention united nations framework convention on climate change so this is the answer so here we should know for sure what is this and otherwise we can't eliminate this because these two are very close options last year in the year 2018 most of the questions in prelims are like this the options are very close Earlier, we, we used it to use this elimination technique very frequently. But here, when there are very close options, it becomes difficult unless we know it correct. Here in the explanation, we have given the value addition. Global Environment Facility is a funding 
under five major institutional environmental conventions these are those five conventions read them once and understand what this does and how it operates next current affairs question is given under question number 62 this is with regard to this particular program known as namami gange program under this namami gange program this pro this question focuses on what are the main pillars of this particular program so if we know the objective of this program what is the objective of this program namami gange program for conservation of ganga river and the ganga river related ecosystem this this is the objective if we know this objective we can identify what are the main pillars let's say we don't know what are the main pillars then by knowing this objective we can identify them let's see a forestation so one of the measures to rejuvenate ganga river is a forestation only because this forest cover increases the clean flows so a a would be correct second option conservation of aquatic life and biodiversity in ganga river and ecosystem conservation this comes so this is this would be correct river front development ganga river conservation and development in that region so yes creating public awareness unless this is there conservation can't happen so this would be there river surface cleaning yes in cleaning ganga river river surface cleaning of solid waste etc so this also would be there industrial effluent monitoring whatever industries that are polluting the river that effluent monitoring would be there so this would be there so it means even if we don't know the main pillars by knowing the objective we can derive them we can identify them so answer would be 1 2 3 4 5 6 it means d here we can eliminate c we can eliminate b why we know that one is correct and we can also easily eliminate a because c would be there in ganga river cleaning so this can also be eliminated even if we don't know the other things for example river front development etc you can identify them by knowing this point and sixth point you can identify the correct answer that's how we say elimination technique can be used in arriving at correct answers so here in the explanation all the main pillars of this program are mentioned the next current affairs question is given under question number 63 this question is regarding philosophies and persons related to that particular philosophy last year in the months of june and july some names of adi shankara acharya ramanuj acharya were in news because of that we have given you this question here if you see the options answers without reading these a b c d s here you can see for a in three options two is given so let's examine that advaita philosophy is it by adi shankara acharya if we know that we can eliminate this or if we know that advaita is by some other philosopher or if it is by vallabhacharya we can eliminate next three but advaita is adi shankara acharya's philosophy so a is eliminated now for b it is 1 3 4 for c 4 and 3 so if we can eliminate either 3 or 4 from c we can eliminate two options so we will get the answer if we can eliminate three we will we'll get the answer as b or if we can eliminate four we will get tie between c and d let's see for c c means dvaita advaita this is given by whom ramanujacharya or nimbarka this is given by nimbarka so three is correct it means b can be eliminated now c and d this is the confusion now c vishishta advaita who is it either it is vallabhacharya or ramanujacharya shuddha advaita vallabhacharya ramanujacharya if we can say vishishta advaita is ramanujacharya then answer would be d or if it would be c so here elimination technique is not leaving us with one answer it is giving us tie between c and d so we should know them properly otherwise we can't attempt such questions here dvaita advaita is by nimbarka 
శుద్ధ అద్వైత ఈజ్ బై వల్లభాచార్య సో ఆన్సర్ ఈజ్ డి హియర్ ఎలిమినేషన్ టెక్నిక్ ఈజ్ లీవింగ్ అస్ ఫిఫ్టీ ఫిఫ్టీ ఛాన్సెస్ ఓన్లీ సో ఇఫ్ యూ వాంట్ టు టేక్ రిస్క్ టేక్ అదర్వైజ్ బెటర్ దీస్ ఫిలాసఫీస్ ఆర్ ఇన్ వెరీ ఫ్యూ నెంబర్స్ సో దిస్ ఈజ్ అ ప్రాబబుల్ క్వశ్చన్ సో నోట్ దెమ్ డౌన్ అట్ వన్ ప్లేస్ రివైజ్ దెమ్ ఎన్ నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ టైమ్స్ హియర్ ఇన్ ద వాల్యూ అడిషన్ ఆఫ్ ఎక్స్ప్లెనేషన్ వీ హ్యావ్ గివెన్ యూ ఇన్ డీటెయిల్ బికాస్ లాస్ట్ ఇయర్ వన్ టూ వన్ సిక్స్ ఫుట్ టాల్ స్టాచ్యూ ఆఫ్ రామానుజాచార్య ఈజ్ సెట్ టు బి అన్వీల్డ్ దట్స్ వై దిస్ వాజ్ న్యూస్ సో రీడ్ దీస్ ఫిలాసఫీస్ వన్స్ మేక్ ఎ షార్ట్ నోట్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ ఇట్ ది నెక్స్ట్ కరెంట్ అఫైర్స్ క్వశ్చన్ ఈజ్ గివెన్ అండర్ క్వశ్చన్ నెంబర్ సిక్స్టీ ఫోర్ దిస్ క్వశ్చన్ ఈజ్ ఆస్కింగ్ ది ట్రూ స్టేట్మెంట్స్ రిగార్డింగ్ నీల్ కురుంజీ ఫ్లవర్స్ దిస్ నీల్ కురుంజీ ఫ్లవర్స్ వాజ్ అ న్యూస్ ఇన్ ద మంత్ ఆఫ్ జూన్ Let's see the options given. These are the flowers. Neel Kunzi, Kurunzi flowers will bloom once in 12 years. So let's say we don't know that. Neel Kunzi plant is a temperate plant species which is generally found in temperate regions of Asia and Australia. So this is a factual question. We should know this also, this also. Tropical and temperate. Here, by reading this particular article, this has become very famous during that period because these flowers boom, bloom once in 12 years means very rare so this regarding this we should know the factual information so this one is correct second it is not temperate it is tropical so for that if we know this factual information these flowers bloom in nilgiri hills in india if we know this particular fact we can eliminate option 2 why nilgiri is not in temperate zone it is in tropical zone so if we know about 12 years and nilgiri is we can answer this particular question so one is correct two is incorrect answer is a one only here the option is given a and explanation is given annamalai hills near mannar it is very famous so read about this once and make notes of it if you don't have already next current affairs question is given under question number 66 the question again is a factual question khan prahari app is seen is related to what this question can be solved by knowing the hindi meaning of this particular word khan prahari khan means coal mine prahari means soldier it means something related to coal and reporting something like that so by knowing the meaning of these two terms we can answer this question let's read the options tool for reporting any activity related to illegal coal mining so this is the probable answer let's read the other options also tool for reporting any activity related to illegal immigration it might not be c tool for easing registration for tourists visiting haj yatra not tool for reporting sexual abuse of minor girls to ministry of women and child welfare no so as the translation of these two words leads leads us to this the answer is a that is tool for reporting any activity related to illegal coal mining khan means coal prahari means soldier here in the explanation it is given answer a an explanation is given how it operates how it works and which ministry has given this next prelims question is given under question number 86 this is related to price deficiency payment this is the one scheme that was proposed and four options are given so when there are questions which asks us what is the meaning of this term or what it refers then by dissecting that particular word now we have price deficiency payment by understanding these three meanings of these three three terms we can answer this question but let's read this the price at which government procures a commodity from the producers what is it called procurement price the price at which the producers sell their produce to mandis what is this called msp read third option the prices at which government compensates the price differentials in msp and market price here the word deficiency is matching with this 
Okay, let's keep it aside and read the other option also. The price at which FCI will sell it to PDS? No. So, the answer is C. It means, by such questions, by understanding the meaning of the term, we can arrive at the answer. Here, answer is C. The meaning of it is being given over here. Next current affairs question is given under question number 87. Read the question. With regard to eDNA, which of the following statements e is not correct? Underline this. Now read the options. eDNA is directly extracted from living organisms. First of all, we should understand what is this eDNA? Is it electronic DNA or what is it? The meaning of eDNA is ecological DNA, not electronic DNA. So, we, if we know this, then we can arrive at the answer. eDNA is directly extracted from the living organisms. Let's keep this aside for some time. B. eDNA is the tool for monitoring the biodiversity of an area. By understanding the meaning of this term ecological DNA, it means you are observing the DNA in the ecology or ecosystem. It means we can monitor the biodiversity. So, this is correct. Skin, hair and carcasses of organisms are the sources of eDNA. So, eDNA can be, can we can get them from skin, hair and carcasses. So, this also is seems correct. D. eDNA is the DNA that is collected from a variety of environmental samples. So, ha as this word ecological is there, this also is looking correct. So, which one is incorrect? So, if we are extracting eDNA directly from the living organisms, that is normal DNA only. DNA extraction is done from living organisms directly. Why are we keeping it a different name? If we are calling it with eDNA, there might be some difference or some other meaning. So, this is not correct. That's why answer is A, that is eDNA. eDNA is collected from the environment and ecology, not from the organism directly. Here, the explanation is given, how it is collected, what are the applications of it, from where do we collect the samples, etc. Please go through this once. Next current affairs question is given under question number 88. This question is regarding Pradhana Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana. Remember every time from the current issues like these schemes are asked in prelims. At least 4-5 or five questions are asked on different schemes. So we should be thorough in schemes of different ministries. Now what is the question about Pradhana Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana. It means something related to women, something related to maternal means mother. Let's read the options. First option says, under the scheme, all pregnant women and lactating mothers are offered cash incentive of 6000. By looking at this fact, we might think this is correct. But this is the keyword. All pregnant women means those who are employed in central government, state government, who are well off. Everyone comes when we say all. So, is it correct or not? So, we should keep this statement aside. Let's read the second statement. A beneficiary is eligible to receive the benefits under the scheme only once. This is a factual data. So, we should know about the details or important provisions of scheme to answer these two points. Here, all is obviously incorrect. So, we can eliminate that. Now, the doubt is in two. If we know this, we can say B is the answer. If not, D is the answer. But by reading the provisions of this scheme, this is applicable only once. So, B is the answer. Here in the explanation, it is mentioned why statement 1 is incorrect, why statement 2 is correct. Here we should remember this is 5,000 not 6,000 rupees and not all pregnant women. There are exceptions in central government, women employed in state governments, PSUs. These are not eligible to get the fund under the scheme. Next current affairs question is given under question number 89. This question is referring to marginal cost of lending rate. In our economy, 
this is a current affairs question this marginal lending rate was changed because of that this was the news but in most cases from our economy we get current affairs questions and specifically from the banking chapter we get these terminologies they ask one term and ask us what is the meaning of that particular term so we should be thorough in the terms of banking here marginal cost of lending rate means what here by dissecting this particular word marginal cost of lending rate lending rate means interest rate marginal means below or low level that is the meaning of marginal so low interest rate so let's see which option suits to these two terms the rate at which central bank of a country lends money to commercial banks here there is no mentioning of this word low this is normally called as bank rate so this is not correct second option the rate at which the central bank of a country borrows money from the commercial banks this is known as reverse repo rate in the short term so this is also not correct c minimum interest rate of a bank below which it cannot lend except in some cases allowed by rbi here two terms are converging marginal means we thought below so this is their interest rate yes interest rate okay let's keep this aside read the fourth option it is a specified amount minimum fraction of the total deposits of the customers which commercial banks have to hold as reserves either in cash or in deposits with the central bank if it is in the cash known as crr so this is also not correct so answer is c by dissecting the word given in the question we can arrive at this answer remember this technique this will help us in our environment in our programs etc here in the explanation the answer is given and explained what is the meaning of the term the last current affairs question in today's paper is 90th question this question is related to current affairs related geography here island names are given country names are given and their pairs are being tested whether they are correctly paired or not such paired questions are common in our geography related current affairs questions now agalega island is it in mauritius let's say we don't know this assumption island assumption island seashells this is very famous seashells have put hold about this particular project in this particular island so this is correct it means 2 is correct so 2 is an option a 2 is an option c so if we can eliminate either 1 or 3 we can get the answer so this is not the answer this is not the answer out of a and c these two we should eliminate 1 or 3 now let's go through 3 sulawesi island in india so have we heard of this island any time no so in most probable cases 3 is incorrect so option c is incorrect option a is correct alag agalega island is in mauritius sulawesi is in indonesia medho island is in maldives not in sri lanka so 1 and 2 correct 3 and 4 incorrect as the question is asking us correct answer a is correct answer here in the explanation we have mentioned what are the correct pairs what are the incorrect pairs and please make sure that you analyze all the questions that you have attempted not attempted analyze your score score and marks are not the measure of qualifying this examination how much you analyze how much you understood how much you rectify the mistakes in the next exam that makes us successful so please do analyze each and every question your thought process should be analyzed thoroughly